Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I'm Trace. This is going to be a short series, just two episodes, and we're going to talk about minerals. Make sure you subscribe so you get both of these episodes. You can also come find both of them together, smush it into one episode over on iTunes. You can link in the description to get to there. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between a rock and a mineral, and also why gemstones are precious. And then tomorrow, we're going to talk about where you can find these. And this is like not on this earth places. It's going to be really cool. So here on Earth and throughout human history, we have naturally occurring compounds that for some reason we covet. We value, you know, these things above those things. For example, you open a treasure chest, it's not like pyrite that comes spilling out. It's gold and diamonds and gems and jewels of various types and they all fall out. But like, aren't both of those things just rocks, right? But when you talk about it with like your friends, you know, those are rocks and these are rocks and aren't they all just rocks? Yeah, they are. But no, they also aren't. We were really curious about this and Kay Jewelers, the sponsor of this episode, they asked us to look into it. So that worked out really well for everybody. When you're in your backyard and you bend down, you'll see rocks. You know, a rock is literally pretty much anything in the Earth's crust. Actually, according to the dictionary, a rock is a solid mineral forming part of the surface of the Earth or other similar planets, exposed on the surface or underlying the soil or oceans. Basically, a rock is anything at the surface of the Earth, any crust stuff on the planet. But inside of a rock, that's where things get interesting. Inside of a rock, those things are minerals. So a mineral could be like quartz or feldspar. Those are minerals. And when formed together or mushed into one thing, along with a bunch of other stuff like silicates and things, those are rocks. But minerals inside, they make up a rock. So quartz and feldspar, when mixed together, form a rock called granite. United States Geological Survey says that minerals are naturally occurring inorganic compounds with a unique chemical structure and physical properties. So they're defined from a rock in that it's got something special to it. A mineral is like a special rock. <laughs> it's something like, like gold. Gold is a mineral. It's a special kind of rock. Some of these minerals will then form crystals. They're even more rare. Quartz is an example of that, but quartz actually isn't that rare. Rare crystals, those get a whole different name. Rare crystallized minerals, we call those gemstones. So we're slowly breaking this down for you, no pun intended. So in your backyard, you probably have rocks. Those rocks are made of minerals, and there might even be some crystallized minerals in your backyard. If you have a big enough one, you wander around, and you might find a valuable mineral in your backyard, but probably not enough to like mine your backyard and sell those minerals. Minerals and gems are classified by their physical properties. So they've got like hardness, color, density, magnetism, luster is one maybe you've heard of. They're identified by those and also by ways in which they break. If you break a mineral in half, different minerals are going to do different things. You can also identify them by the type of mark or streak that they'll leave. So if you rub a mineral on a laboratory tool called a streak plate, they will make different marks. So an example of luster, because that one was maybe a little confusing, is a mineral's luster is the way that light would reflect off of the surface of the mineral. So you're probably thinking of stuff you're seeing in commercials. We're still talking about stuff you find in your backyard. So two major types of luster are metallic and non-metallic. Pyrite, which I mentioned earlier, also known as fool's gold, has a metallic luster. It looks like gold, but it's not. It's actually kind of brassy looking. It looks like it's made of metal. A mineral with a non-metallic luster could be shiny, but it doesn't appear to be metal. So an example might be uh, marble that doesn't look like metal. But it, also, speaking of marble, we could talk about how things break. You know, that's a little confusing, but sometimes you'll see, especially on TV, a geologist might break a mineral in half to try and figure out what it is. That is because things will break differently, and they'll do something called either fracturing or they'll talk about the cleavage of that. Cleavage is the tendency for minerals to break along flat surfaces. So the bonds between the atoms and those surfaces are less strong, and they don't go in different directions like others. So marble, which we were just talking about, breaks along a line, if you think about it, because that's where it's weakest. Fracturing is the tendency of something to break into a bunch of irregular pieces. Think like glass or quartz. They'll break into a bunch of chunks, not along specific lines. So these are ways that geologists can kind of 
break down minerals into different categories. If you were lucky enough to find a pure, rare, crystallized mineral in your yard, it would look a lot like a rock, actually. Diamonds, for example, a pretty valuable mineral, in rock form kind of look like chunks of clear glass, and often they're embedded within other rocks. However, that little chunk of diamond would be called a gemstone. A gemstone, when it's uncut, it's just a rock that has special properties, they look ordinary. But if you take that rock and you cut it up in just the right way and you polish it just the right way, now it has value. You can sell it in a store. A clear rock is still pretty cool, you know, just a rock that is a diamond. But cut and polish, that's money. That's where the money comes in because there's some skill to that. Gems are divided into different classes. You've got semi-precious, which are like amber, jade, topaz, a bunch of others. You see those in museums a lot. A lot of ancient cultures used those things because they have inherent value. Jade is very pretty. It's a very specific color, and it can be polished, and it looks really cool. It's still a rock at the end of the day, and they don't cut it in the same way that they do some of these other gems. And those, those are the precious gems, things like diamonds, rubies, emeralds, those are precious, also sapphires. Amethyst was once considered a precious gem, but they found so many of them down in South America, they reduced its value overall. So now it's considered semi-precious because it's not as rare as they once thought. So it's a combination of one, how it looks, two, how rare it is, three, how it's cut up. All of these different things determine what ones come out of your pirate treasure chest and what ones wouldn't. Obviously, a lot of this value does come from society, but some of it can come from the skill of the jeweler. Humans have adorned ourselves in things like pretty rocks since ancient times, but it wasn't just rocks. Neolithic settlements did have shelves on their walls to display the tchotchkes that the people who lived there had collected. And Neolithic, we're talking tens of thousands of years ago. These are shells, stones, bones from things that they'd hunted or found or caught. And once we started finding more precious stones like rubies and diamonds, these became more and more valuable than a pretty shell. The difference between stones in a pirate chest and the stones in your backyard is simply that in the pirate chest, someone found a vein of these minerals, they dug it up, they cut it into a pretty shape, and then for some reason put it in a pirate chest. But what is it? about these gems. Why do we like these? Rubies are that beautiful red color. Rubies are actually a mineral called corundum. Corundum is basically extremely hard aluminum oxide. So like crystallized aluminum rust, more or less. The red color is caused by traces of chromium that are inside of that corundum. Corundum also forms sapphire. Emeralds are another form of mineral called beryl. It's a silicate of beryllium and aluminum. So also aluminum, a little bit of beryllium in there, and then a silicon oxygen combination of salt, basically. Color in emeralds, that pretty green color, comes from chromium and vanadium that are inside of there. But different trace elements can actually produce other colors of emerald. And beryl can also form semi-precious stones like aquamarine. So emeralds are maybe more pure or more beryl in there. The big one here, of course, diamonds, are made of carbon atoms. Carbon's actually super common, one of the more common elements on Earth. But many diamonds aren't large enough or cut right, so they aren't valuable for jewels. The hardest natural substance on Earth is diamonds. Carbon atoms also create graphite, though. It's in a different arrangement. Graphite you would recognize from, like, number two pencils, one of the softest things around. And the reason that they aren't the same is because the carbon atoms are arranged differently. Diamonds are made far under the earth with a lot of temperature and a lot of pressure. You can also make them in a lab, of course. But they use them for a variety of different things. Diamonds are pretty cool as well. And they're clear. That's pretty neat. Now that we've figured out the difference between all these precious stones, what can we do with them? I mean, rubies and emeralds, are very pretty to look at. They make a lot of jewelry out of them. Diamonds, however, they have some really amazing special properties, and they're highly useful to science and technology. And as this is a science podcast, pretty sure you're going to be excited about these too. We've got industrial applications. We've got diamond paper, which is like sandpaper, but obviously better. We've got diamond saws, which are like regular saws, but obviously better. We've got diamond solar panels, 
which are like solar panels, but better. You see a pattern here? Diamonds can make a lot of different industrial applications and scientific applications better. We are even using diamonds to learn more about our solar system. But for that, you're going to have to come back tomorrow. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus today. I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, K Jewelers. They know one or two things about working with diamonds. I think you would agree. Every kiss begins with K. You know, and also it's a lot easier to find a gem at a K Jewelers than it is in your backyard, I just want to say. So what do you think about gemstones? Do you have a favorite? What's your birthstone? Do you even know anymore? Do people do birthstones anymore? Let us know down in the comments and keep coming back here to Test Tube Plus for more videos. Also, come find me on Twitter if you have any science questions. I'm at Trace Dominguez. Thank <laughs> you.